welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new Inkalis Polyglutamic Acid Dewy Sunscreen SPF 30. But before we get into that, my name is Eddie, as known as Mo to Skin on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever have you, and where I cover sunscreen, skincare, wellness, self care, everything that's going to make you a better version of yourself. So welcome. Before we begin this video, I'm also going to ask you to please hit that subscribe button and like this video. Every subscribe and every like helps my channel grow. So thank you. Now without further ado, let's get into the review of the Inke List new sunscreen launch. Okay, so with any sunscreen video that I do, I am always going to cover application, reapplication on top of itself, and how it works with makeup. Those are things we all want to know before we spend our coin on a sunscreen that's going to go on our face each and every day because we have to be applying sunscreen every single day so we want the sunscreen we spend our money on to work in every factor. So before we get into the formal review, let's talk about this sunscreen. So this is an SPF 30 sunscreen in an all chemical UV format, meaning there's no potential for white cast in this sunscreen. This also claimed to deliver a dewy finish to the skin and we're gonna talk about that. Stay tuned till the end so I can tell you what I think about those claims. And it's also supposed to have that star ingredient polyglutamic acid. And if you don't know what polyglutamic acid is, it is basically more hydrating than hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is supposed to hold its weight in water a thousand times over. Apparently polyglutamic acid does it 4,000 times. Yeah, so we're doing something way more hydrating than hyaluronic acid. So that's why I was super excited by this sunscreen. Hydrating, also made for acne prone skin, dewy, SPF 30, affordable, Heck yes, of course I want to try this. If you guys have seen any ads roaming around the interwebs, my face was actually filmed for using some of this ads. It was at home. So if you see my face, please tag me. Let me know. That is so fascinating. It's part of my job and I rarely see it. So when people let me know that they saw it, I get so happy. So let's get into day one. So I applied this sunscreen in one layer and went about my day. And this is what I noticed. So upon first application, I noticed it had this kind of like gripping effect, like a good moisturizer sunscreen combo where it was hydrating, moisturizing, but also protecting my skin, but also had this nice grip on the skin. I felt like this was not moving whatsoever throughout the day, or if I brushed up against it, or if I put makeup on top of it, we'll get into that. But on first application, that's what it felt like, just a good solid gripping sunscreen. I also noticed that even though it's dewy, I was expecting radiant, just like juicy skin. Honestly, this sinks into the skin really well, where it just feels like you're covered, like you're blanketed, like, like there's nothing escaping from your skin. So if you're dealing with skin barrier issues or if you have chronic dryness or any of those things, this is definitely going to be able to stop that from happening and lessen trans epidermal water loss. Like I said, this has more hydration than hyaluronic acid, so it just makes sense in that regard. And with first application, I also noticed that it was a lot. It didn't necessarily sink in like nothing. Like I know it's hydrating, I know it's gripping, but that also comes along with the territory that I could kind of feel it on my skin. Not in a horrible, this is greasy, this is heavy way. It just felt present. Like there was a layer of something on my skin. I could feel it, not necessarily see it. And even though it's a dewy sunscreen, it gave you more of a controlled glow in certain places. So it didn't feel dewy or radiant or matte. It just felt like you looked hydrated, like you just moisturized, but like not even towards that end, more in the middle side of the spectrum. And first application, I did notice I needed to tap it in a little bit because it did get a little bit streaky. So you blend it out, it's nice, but then you can feel some tugging because of that grippiness I mentioned. So I would have to tap it in. And once I did that, it kind of went away, the streakiness, because even though it's 100% chemical, no white powder in here, no zinc, no titanium dioxide, for a second you think it's going to leave a white cast, but once you blend it out and then tap it in, that's where the magic happens. And it's good. You're good to go. So first application, it didn't pill. It did have that weird streakiness, but one layer should be fine for you. 
should we're gonna get into it but like one layer works rather well your skin feels good you look moisturized it doesn't pull your skincare underneath it just feels and looks and acts really well as a first application so first application was a pass now second reapplication how did this work on top of itself on second reapplication everything i said from the first application just times it by two <laughs> Like, honestly, the second time around, it feels a little heavier, feels like another layer of grippiness, feels like another layer of moisturizer, honestly. So secondary application, I'll be honest, wasn't that fun because you could really feel it. On top of that, when you're blending it out and tapping it in, it is attaching now to the first layer. So it's a little bit more difficult to blend out and ignore those certain factors when it comes to the sunscreen. But reapplication was not my favorite thing. And honestly, it didn't pill, but like I said, it kept attaching and being streaky to those patches. Then my nose got really weird and clumpy. It looked like I just snorted something, you know, that stuff that yeah it just looked wrong it just looked wrong it was weird on my nose it was getting all these textural issues i didn't really like it it felt like i was putting a mineral sunscreen on where mineral sunscreens tend to attach and act weird and cling on to dry patches it was acting not like what i'm used to to a chemical sunscreen so second time reapplication on top of itself honestly not fun i don't think anyone's really gonna want to do it i yeah it, it was not a pass for the second reapplication and now to end it, how does this work with makeup? So with makeup, I did one layer, of course, not on top of the second reapplication. That would be too many layers. But on top of one layer, honestly, it works pretty good. Not amazingly, like this is not gonna blur your skin texture. It's not going to like, I don't know, like this sunscreen, to be honest, feels like a gripping primer, but without being so gel-like or so dewy. It's a little bit more like a moisturizer, like a good moisturizer that just seals everything in. And it went on top of makeup pretty well. It didn't react weird at all. From the footage, you can see how it applies. And I look in a close mirror, and honestly, I didn't notice anything wrong up until I noticed a little bit of pilling going around the beard area. And I thought, oh, maybe it's facial hair. But then I looked on the other side and it was perfect. So I think it was reacting a little bit to the leftover sunscreen that wasn't necessarily well distributed and well blended in. I believe it kind of interacted with the sunscreen and had that pilling because I only experience that kind of minimal pilling when it comes to sunscreens, and this was the sunscreen underneath the makeup. But on top of everything else, it looked good. So honestly, it's gonna work well. Just heed with caution if you're gonna have a really long day or you want your makeup to be flawless, because so far when it comes to makeup on top of this, it's not necessarily like the thing I'm going to reach for. Honestly, I would reach for this sunscreen if I was not wearing any makeup or if I had skin barrier issues or I was really dry that day. And also if I wanted a control do, not a super do or a matte look. So with makeup, I would give it like a eight out of 10, did its job, didn't destroy anything. I wouldn't avoid makeup necessarily if I wore the sunscreen. So an eight out of 10, taking off two points for the fact that it's not making me want to use it with makeup and also it's not necessarily making it even better. But with the gripping technology in here, it might work for you and you actually might enjoy it. I actually thought I was going to enjoy it under makeup, but honestly, I didn't really. So that was my experience, that's anecdotal. But if you've tried it, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you think if you agree disagree all of that but that's my review on this with makeup all right well that's the end of my video all in all i think the polyglutamic sunscreen by the inkalis is really good 
It is affordable. It does not leave a white cast. It has that hydration in it. It is pretty good for an SPF 30 chemical sunscreen. And honestly, I'm not gonna hold it up to the high standards of these $40 sunscreen, $50 sunscreens, because that's not what this is. This is affordable. This is supposed to be every day. And this is just supposed to like be easy. Just, you know, lug and go. And I think this deserves that recognition for that. But all in all, yeah, I definitely think you guys should check out this sunscreen and at least make your own idea of anything I said. Maybe you'll like it, but let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested to see if you guys agree or disagree with my reviews. All right, guys, thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay doing.